This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. Valeria Tellez interviews Hamida Taraki. She is a life coach and theta healer. Hamida Taraki was born in Tehran, Iran, and she was a witness to the revolution and the war with Iraq. Challenging life after the war and the bad financial decisions of her father made her think more about happiness and success. Hamida became an observer. She loved reading books and psychology, philosophy, anthropology were her favorites. Thirsty for knowing other cultures, Hamida had chosen a bachelor's in French translation. After graduation, besides her daily job, she was translating books and articles during the nights and weekends. Her books have been published by famous publishers in Tehran. Still, Hamida wasn't feeling happy or satisfied. At that time, she was feeling a heavy pressure on her shoulders. She was all the time scared of the future, and it gave her a kind of anxiety. Something inside Hamida was pushing her to go faster, but towards where? What was her purpose? Finally, the pressures made her sick, a strange, strong headache behind her left ear. She couldn't sleep anymore. Hamida was taking painkillers for a while. She was forcing herself to keep going. In 2007, Hamida immigrated to Montreal, Canada, seeking her real purpose in life and her highest passion. She took every opportunity and help. She was always passionate about lots of things. She was starting them passionately. But Hamida was bored after a while. So she came back to university. For four years, she was going from one field to another. Finally, when she was in job counseling, she found her place. But her headaches became worse. Doctors couldn't find anything. Suddenly, she was crushed. Hamida had to stop everything. She used to be a blamer, projecting the problems to others. Her parents, situations, society, politicians, etc. She was full of resentments. Non-stop headaches and a very low level of energy made her stop every activity in her life. Hamida couldn't even read a book. So she had been forced to have lots of silent moments. She listened to motivational audios and videos. That was her transformational time. Hamida recognized a kind of power inside her that had always guided her. She learned to look differently, to ask the universe different questions. As soon as she made her decision to be healthy, the universe started providing her with the right people and guidance. After one year, her energy boosted and Hamida had fewer headaches. When for the first time she meditated, she found it the best and most interesting experience she had ever had. When she was participating in life coaching classes, Hamida was introduced to Theta Healing. She found it amazing. She had already learned Reiki. However, with practicing Theta Healing, she could feel the shifts inside her. Her physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies were healing at the same time. She had started feeling energetically lighter. She also gained a smorgasbord of significant new insights into herself and her life. Last year, Lamida launched her online company. She works hard, but she enjoys every minute of it. She is working and is also a volunteer for the Women's Center in downtown Montreal. Meet Hamida at hamidataraki.com and sholoshop.com. Here's the interview with Hamida Taraki. In your own words, who am I speaking with today? <laughs> well, I see myself just as a simple passenger walking through the journey of this planet. I am a warrior of 
light. I accept myself as I am. I listen to my inner voice. I enjoy my life as much as possible. I jump on every opportunity to dance and laugh like a child. Sometimes I make mistakes, but I learn. I strive to the best of myself. On the path of this life, I have learned not to take the weight of the world on my shoulders, but to deal with the challenges of the moment. Now I know that it does matter what my choices are while confronting challenges. I am practicing though keeping my vibration as higher as possible and I'm recreating myself piece by piece. What is life to you? Life is just being and being conscious. When we struggle for survival, we suffer. We don't enjoy. Contrast and duality are a part of life, like darkness and light, up and down, sadness and happiness, abundance and lack. These forces are not just opposites. They merely balance each other. Our reaction towards the contrast, though, is our choice and forms our life. It means having a life in misery or joyfully depends on our choices. I don't talk about someone who was born in a poor family because that was their choice at the soul level to come to that family for accomplishing something. I am talking about a new creation. That is, we have the power to manage our life by modifying our inner world. When we become conscious about what is going on inside us, when we start removing every pattern that is blocking us from being joyful and authentic, we start truly experiencing a meaningful life. Life is being joyful, not seeking joy. Because again, it becomes misery, just being and letting joy flow. This is life. What do you think is the opposite of life? Following unconsciously some old predefined programs that we have received from our ancestors on our DNAs or from the collective consciousness, Letting them guide us is the opposite of life because they make us conditional. They bring us sadness and fear of loneliness, fear of being rejected by others or the society, etc. And that is the opposite of wholeness and light, the opposite of joy and peace. What is the purpose of the human experience? I believe that we have chosen to come here to learn lessons and virtues. In every lifetime, we have chosen in advance which lessons and virtues to complete. Sometimes we fail, we go and come back again to complete it. We have chosen to be present at this body, this time, this situation, we have chosen our parents as well to experience certain, certain things, to learn some lessons, some virtues. And everything has a meaning. Every decision, event, coincidence means to be. They help us complete our mission on this, on this uh, third plane of existence. At this time, what is the purpose of your life? Um, what is the purpose of my life? I think recreating myself is the main purpose. And the second is being at the service of others.
What are some of the greatest misconceptions about happiness, in your opinion? The first one is that people think that happiness comes from the outside. More money, a better position, a new lover brings happiness. But when you, um, we have lots of blockings, even though we reach whatever we want, we feel miserable. This is the nature of human beings that after reaching any goal, even apparently uh, the unreachable or the best one, they celebrate one day or two. Then it becomes ordinary. The misery shows up again. If someone has some thought patterns like I am not enough or I am not good enough, everything or everywhere where they reach, they won't be satisfied. We saw this between the, the famous people like Amy uh, Winehouse, Whitney Houston, or our dear Jane Fonda, they had all, but they haven't been happy. The second is uh, that accepting some thoughts on the subconscious level create an illusion world for the person and make them narrow-minded. They see the world limited. Some beliefs like, Happiness doesn't last. We have to suffer or suffering is a part of this life. Being happy is a sin. If you suffer, you will be closer to God and so on. These kinds of patterns put people in a position to not accept happiness. And the third one is that you don't know what being happy feels like. Some people simply don't have some feelings. They don't have experienced it in this or another lifetime. Even they may not be able to verbalize such complex or unusual emotions themselves. And um, in Theta Healing, actually, we can download the feelings from the seventh plane of existence. This fixes the, their problem and shifts the course of uh, their life. What do you love most about being in a human body? <laughs> As a human being, good question. I enjoy using my five senses. I enjoy eating, music, dancing, nature, the fatigue after, uh, uh, after a workout feeling water on my skin um, when I take a shower. All these simple things, I enjoy them. What is healing to you? Well, releasing heavy thoughts, feelings, emotions stored in our subconscious mind that are making us suffer is healing. They become anchors that keep us in a familiar paradigm on earth. So freeing ourselves from unfunctional patterns and replacing them with useful, positive, and functional ones means healing. In another word, you are reprogramming yourself to change your reality. In Theta Healing, the healing takes place through four levels. Uh, core level, genetic level, history level, and soul level. What is the meaning of freedom to you? What is to be free? Freedom is to be able to express our authentic self, to be ourselves, to live our true, true self, and to accept ourselves as we are, to live joyfully, not to feel any inner or other pressure, not to carry any old wound, because we carry wounds from one life to another. 
It is, um, I think it is our birthright to be free. It's just a matter of decision to free the old patterns and open up new doors of self-awareness and growth. At this time, what is the world's greatest need? And also, do you have a vision for a new reality? Um, since 2012, the energy of Earth has shifted. More people are awakening. You see all the growing number of masters, gurus, books, videos. People are searching. When there are students, the teachers show up. I believe the greatest need is to help people who ask for help first. Those who don't ask for help or don't want to change, it's not their time of evolution. When it's time, they will come. But those who are ready, we can help by being at service to them, having compassion, um, a sense of compression. We have to collaborate for raising the collective consciousness uh, as much as we, we are able. My vision for a new reality is investing in ourself, ourselves before everything else is very important. Our health physically, morally, mentally, and spiritually takes place first. And then we have to work on strengthening our relationships. What is your understanding and idea of love? Nice question. Uh, red and gold are the colors of love to me. Love touches your heart, captures your nervous system, gives you some wings that you will be able to fly like the fairies. The best is when you develop a love of yourself. Then you see the world and others with the eyes of this love. It is a permanent and a stable one and gives you a feeling of security and wholeness. You won't seek love elsewhere anymore. When you appreciate yourself and you, you honor your value, all sorts of love will flow freely to you from others or from the universe. What is inner peace to you? Based on my personal experience, recognizing the voice of your ego from your inner voice, freeing some space inside you by releasing, some, uh, we say it uh, in Theta Healing, uh, three R's, rejection, resentment, and regret. And then you can free some space when you release these uh, feelings. And finally, learning how to be an observer of your thoughts and letting go of your judgmental mind, that is inner peace. You don't need to follow all the noises the ego creates. The ultimate power and the pure truth is the creator of all that is. And it exists everywhere. It is all around us. This is the place of pure wisdom, the creative force, the essence of pure love. This is the place of instant healings, manifestations, the highest truth. It just is. It is what we are, all of us. <laughs> what is to be spiritual? And what is spirituality? Spirituality is about questioning life, death, God, soul, your existence, listening to your inner voice, becoming a researcher to find your answers. It's free of predefined rules. It's free of any frame. Spirituality is not a single path or belief system. It's learning about your existence. How do you define success? What is to be successful to you? 
Success starts and begins with us. These uh, recent years I learned when you know who you are, you can be who you are. And when you can be who you are without fear, then anything and everything is possible. When you work on yourself consciously, awake and aware, at the same time as you, uh, you do on your goals, you co-create yourself and your life at the same time. This is a success. Mostly, success is whatever you become in the process. You are successful when you are ready for change. You go for the change before it comes and beat you. When you follow your dreams, you work enough to make it happen. You persist. Don't give up. You will embrace abundance, joy, self-satisfaction sooner or later in whatever you are doing. So, why did you choose to do what you do? You know, Valeria, in my whole life, I was searching for meaning and fulfillment. I had lots of up and down. I can confess that I participated in any classes or seminars where I could find an answer about who I was and how I could become a better person. Four years of 10 at the university, I was going from one field to another to find out what I really liked. First, I finished a BA in translation, French-Persian uh, translation, and I liked it, but I wasn't satisfied working so hard for each and every book, and the best publishers in Tehran had published them, but I used to say, so what? That's it? <laughs> Finally, I entered the program of job counseling. I loved it. The special thing about this field was that I discovered some qualities about myself. Like when I had a client, a kind of strong energy was freeing inside me. I was becoming so energetic, creative, and effective. My, my compassion, sense of support, and comprehension um, were really appreciated. So that was the first click. I had never paid attention to those qualities before. Once uh, when I was practicing bodybuilding, uh, one of the girls in my group talked about life coaching. That was the first time I heard about this profession. So I did my researches and I found out um, a course not too far from uh, my house. So I registered for the course and I, I've got my diploma later. The same teacher presented theta healing as the best technique hand in hand with life coaching. So I registered for the first seminar by curiosity. But later, I confess, I couldn't stop myself not continuing. I fell in love with this modality. I found it so powerful. I became a life coach and theta healer. Last year, I was bombarded with messages from my angels to take action. First, I couldn't understand what kind of action. They guided me to start a business, so I became an entrepreneur as well. Now I have a team and um, our focus is on high quality product with, uh, with all, all kind of uh, spiritual themes like mandala, bob, bandanas, etc. And I enjoy every step of it, even though it's not easy. I am tired most of the time. Learning doesn't finish, and it seems scary to have um, very younger than you as competitors who are way better than you in technology, designing, etc. 
But when you realize that everyone has their potential, creativity, and goals, not everyone searches the same thing and the results aren't the same neither. If my angels pushed me to start and keep going, there is a valuable reason. I believe it. And now I don't know. So I continue. (laughs) Talk to me for a moment about the services you offer. I coach mostly people who suffer from low low self-esteem and also uh, women who are victims of domestic violence and business owners, entrepreneurs to reach their high potentials and manifest the abundance uh, they want. Of course, I use Theta Healing as technique for changing beliefs, or installing uh, new thought patterns, inserting positive feelings, removing harmful emotions, extracting oath, vows, psychic contracts, etc. Reality can be created and changed instantly with this te- technique. Where can we find more information about you, your work, products, services, and future projects? My website is hamidetaraki.com, without any space, of course. And my business is shuluShop.com, S-H-O-U-L-O-U, shop.com. And my YouTube channel and Telegram channel are in Persian under my name again, uh, Hamidetaraki. We are almost at the end of our conversation, and I have two final questions for you. If you knew you would die soon, meaning losing the body, would you make any change in your life or do anything in a different way? Uh, I will accelerate whatever I am doing right now. Because after years of self-questioning, now I find myself on the right track. Every day, I do my best to find more limiting patterns that block me from seeing wider and acting limitless. Because I believe as much as I progress in this lifetime, it will impact my other lifetimes, before or after. There is no linear time in the energy realm. What are three things about life you know for sure as of this moment? First, you cannot change people if they don't want to or if they are not ready. You cannot force them. They don't change. (laughs) The second is age is just a number. At any part of your life, if you decide, you can do anything you want. And third, Fall in love with yourself, appreciate everything, and forgive and forgive everyone, including yourself. It truly changes your life for the better. Thank you so much for your presence, for sharing your wisdom and doing what you do. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Hamida Taraki and her work, please visit hamidataraki.com and sholoshop.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.